Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay and Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair bring you Our Miss Brooks starring Eve Arden. Time once again for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks, written by Al Lewis. Well, last Friday fell on the 13th of the month, a day of caution for the superstitious. But to Our Miss Brooks, who teaches English at Madison High School, it didn't mean a thing. No, indeed. Even when my landlady told me at breakfast that our cat Minerva came home with two black kittens, I just laughed and said, Mrs. Davis, no. <laughs> oh, yes. They've just had our last drop of milk. But Minerva and I were always so friendly. She didn't say a word to me about this. <laughs> oh, the kittens aren't Minerva's. I don't know where they belong. All I know is that we can't afford to keep them. It would mean two more mouths to feed. You're right, Mrs. Davis. We've got enough trouble feeding the mouths we've got. <laughs> Say, I've got an idea. We could leave them in the Snodgrass pet shop until we located the owner's. Spetcher's father has all sorts of things in his plate. That's true. He even has Stretch. <laughs> Good old Stretch. That boy certainly is a fine athlete. Yes, he is. Now, if there was only some way we could find to exercise his brain. <laughs> Don't worry about the kittens, Mrs. Davis. I'll have Walter Denton drop them off at the pet shop on our way to school this morning. Good. And one more thing, Connie. Would you deliver this jar to Mr. Conklin when you get to school? Certainly, Mrs. Davis. What have you cooked up for our beloved principal? It's a secret concoction, Connie. My own recipe. It never fails. Good. How long does it take to work, and will they find out what's in it at the autopsy? <laughs> it's just a remedy for hiccups, Connie. It contains nothing but juniper juice, oil of cloves, a dash of vinegar, some vanilla extract, a spoonful of baking soda... Uh, tell me a... the rest after breakfast. <laughs> Well, that's about all there is to it. But it's very good. Mrs. Conklin says it's just a nervous reaction. She called last night and told me he got the hiccups yesterday, just a few minutes after he found out that the superintendent of schools is visiting him this afternoon. Mr. Michael, why should he give Mr. Conklin the hiccups? Well, there's a new term starting in February, and it seems that Mr. Michaels wants to chat with Osgood about the way he's running Madison. You mean if Mr. Michaels finds fault with something, there's a chance that Mr. Conklin may not be... Oh, now cut it out, Connie. You're too old to live in a dream world. <laughs> oh, that's Walter Denton. Come in, Walter. Oh, I'd better go into the kitchen. I've got to clean those dishes I used for the kitten's milk. Why don't you let Minerva do the dishes? They're her friends. <laughs> Hi, Miss Brooks. Did I hear Mrs. Davis mention kittens? Just some transient acquaintances, Walter. We're going to drop them off at Stretch's pet shop on the way to school. Oh, swell. Stretch will get a big kick out of him. He loves animals. All kinds of animals. I know. You've been friends for years, haven't you? <laughs> I hope you're not superstitious, Walter, but these are both black cats, and today is Friday the 13th. Oh, that doesn't bother me, Miss Brooks. This is going to be a red-letter day in my memory, the day when the results of careful planning should be brought to fruition. Translation? Well, you've heard of Cure That Habit Incorporated, haven't you? You mean the outfit that helps people overcome alcoholism? Yes, ma'am. They got a big ad in the papers. You know, perhaps you or someone near and dear to you is a victim of this dread disease. Send for our instructive literature telling how you, too, can be cured. Well, the day before yesterday, I sent for it. You, Walter? I always thought you were strictly a two-coke-a-day man. <laughs> Oh, I didn't sign my name and address to the request. I printed the name of someone very near and dear to me. Who? Osgood Conklin. <laughs> Walter, Mr. Conklin doesn't drink. Why, even on New Year's Eve, he just had fruit punch. His proudest boast is that he's a teetotaler. Well, that's the humor of it. When he gets all this stuff in the mail, he'll think that somebody somewhere doesn't believe that he doesn't drink. That thought alone should turn him purple. Well, it's probably be quite a picturesque spectacle. But I still don't think it's right, Walter. Does Harriet know about this rib? Of course not. She's his daughter. She likes Mr. Conklin. <laughs> well, she's bright in other ways. 
Now, come on, Walter. We've got to get started for school if we're going to drop those kittens off. Okay, Miss Brooks. Oh, uh, one thing before we go. Everything I've told you today is strictly confidential. And not that I'm asking for an oath of secrecy or anything. I know that I couldn't possibly feel the admiration and respect for you that I do feel if I thought you'd rat on me. I mean... Uh, Betray my confidence about this joke that I'm pulling. Well, don't worry, Walter. Your secret is safe with me. Miss Brooks, that statement makes me feel warm all over. Really? Sure. In a dangerous practical joke like this, it's great to know that somebody else is in it with you up to her ears. <laughs> Sorry to have kept you waiting, Mr. Chalmers. What can I do for you? Well, Mr. Michaels, as superintendent of schools, you're acquainted, no doubt, with the principal of Madison High School. Oh, yes, that's Osgood Conklin. Matter of fact, I'm going to see him this afternoon. Then I'd very much like to go with you. You see, Mr. Michaels, my son attends Madison High, and I'm very anxious to find out the meaning of this postcard which arrived at my office this morning. Postcard? Yes, sir. I'll, I'll read it to you. It's addressed to Cure That Habit Incorporated. That's my firm, Mr. Michaels. And it says, uh, kindly send me all your literature. I am determined once and for all to rid myself of the curse of alcoholism. It's signed, Osgood Conklin. Here we are, Miss Brooks. Dear old Madison High. I should have known that the Snodgrass Pet Shop doesn't open until nine. What in the world are we going to do with these kittens, Walter? Gosh, I don't know, Miss Brooks. Mr. Conklin's awfully strict about pets in the building. The only animals allowed are in Mr. Boynton's lab. Oh, say, we could keep them in there until lunch period. That's right. Then Stretch could take them over to his dad's shop. Come on, Walter, let's take them in. Wait a minute, where are the kittens? I've got them in my sweater pocket. See, uh, here's one. <laughs> and uh, here's the other one. So much for Maxine and Laverne. Hello, Miss Brooks. Hello, Patty. I mean, Harriet. Hi, hey, Harriet. Well, I gotta run now. I'll talk to you later. Okay, Walter. How does your dad feel, Harriet? Are the hiccups gone? Yes, Miss Brooks. They disappeared about an hour ago. But I'm afraid it isn't permanent. Every time something unpleasant happens, it brings them on again. Well, maybe this remedy that Mrs. Davis sent down will be of some help. I'd better take it into him right now. All right, Miss Brooks. See you in class. Come in. It's me, Mr. Conklin. Oh, Miss Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're back. Who's back? <laughs> Does that answer your question? Maybe you should see a doctor, Mr. Conklin. Saw a doctor yesterday. Pick up! <laughs> Told me to relax, and they go away. Relax. Pick up! <laughs> What's in that jar you've got there? It's a hiccup cure that Mrs. Davis asked me to give you. She made it herself. What's in it? Nothing but juniper juice, oil of cloves, a dash of vinegar, some vanilla extract, and baking soda. I'd rather have the hiccup. <laughs> And if you haven't got anything else handy, maybe you ought to try some of Mrs. Davis's remedy. Well, I might take just one swallow of the stuff. Give it here. Uh, well, Mr. Conklin, what does it taste like? Well, it tastes like... Hiccup! <laughs> like... Hiccup! <laughs> like... Hiccup! <laughs> like... What's the difference as long as it does the job? <laughs> Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, will continue in just a moment. But first, here is Vern Smith. No other dentifrice offers proof of such results. Proof that Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Two years' research at leading universities using Colgate Dental Cream, hundreds of case histories, makes this the most conclusive proof in all dentifrice history on tooth decay. Conclusive proof that when teeth are brushed with Colgate right after eating, Colgate Dental Cream helps stop tooth decay before it starts. Yes, the toothpaste you use to clean your breath while you clean your teeth now offers a safe, proved way to reduce tooth decay. Modern science shows decay is caused by mouth acids, which are at their worst right after eating. Brushing teeth with Colgate's as directed helps remove acids before they harm enamel. 
Colgate Dental Cream has been proved to contain all the necessary ingredients, including an exclusive patented ingredient for effective daily dental care. Get Colgate Dental Cream today. Big economy size, only 59 cents. Remember, no other dentifrice offers proof of such results, so always use Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay before it starts. Well, after giving Mr. Conklin an antidote for Mrs. Davis's hiccup remedy, I returned to my classroom and whiled away the hours before lunch by teaching a bit of English. Promptly at noon, I found myself, by the amazing coincidence which occurs daily, at Mr. Boynton's biology lab. Come in. Oh, it's you, Miss Brooks. I'm glad you dropped in. Very glad indeed. Honestly, Mr. Boynton? I should say so. You've got to get these cats out of here. Oh. <laughs> no, don't worry about that. Walter Denton has asked Stretch to pick them up and take them to the Snodgrass Pet Shop. Oh, good. Where are they, Mr. Boynton? Well, I had to keep them over here in a separate cage, away from the white mice. They, uh, they were pretty upset. Cats do that to mice as a rule. <laughs> well, here they are. This one loves to be petted. <laughs> so does this one, for that matter. Hello, <laughs> Mr. Boynton. I... Oh, excuse me, Miss Brooks. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, that's all right, Stretch. Oh, I don't mind waiting if you want to finish your song. <laughs> No, thanks. I don't know the rest of the words, anyway. Are these the cats Walter wants me to take down to the shop? Oh, that's right, Stretch. Do you think you can handle them all right? Oh, sure. I love animals. Gosh, I think animals are smarter than a lot of people of whom I'm acquainted with. <laughs> I know they're smarter than some people of whom I'm acquainted with. Before I take the cats, Mr. Boynton, I'd like to talk to you about a swap. You got a bullfrog in here I'd like to show my dad. Oh, you don't mean my pet, McDougal. Oh, no, sir. I know you wouldn't let Mac out of your sight. I mean this big fella over here. Hiya, boy. Hiya, big fella. <laughs> you see? He knows me. Say more, fella. <laughs> he certainly talks your language. <laughs> if you'll let me have him, Mr. Boynton, I'll give you Clarence. Clarence? I got him right here in my pocket. There he is. Well, don't be scared. He's perfectly harmless, isn't he, Mr. Boynton? Oh, yes, of course. It's completely non-poisonous, Miss Brooks. This little creature's a milk snake. That's right, Miss Brooks. Just a little old milk snake. Must take a pretty shallow bucket. <laughs> well, he couldn't possibly hurt anyone, Miss Brooks. He's just a baby. That doesn't prove anything. When I was a baby, I bit people all the time. <laughs> Take him away, Stretch, please. Well, yes, Stretch. You keep the snake and uh, take the frog along, too. Gee, thanks, Mr. Boynton. I'll take awful good care of him. Don't forget the kitten, Stretch. Well, I won't. Let's see now. Well, it's a good thing I wore my sport jacket today. I can put the kittens in the side pockets, the frog in an inside pocket, and Clarence in my breast pocket. Too bad you're not a kangaroo. You could give me a lift to the cafeteria. <laughs> Oh, I'm not going to the cafeteria. I got to go to the principal's office and clean it up. Mr. Conklin's expecting some high brass down. You mean the chandeliers loose? <laughs> no, ma'am. The superintendent of schools is coming here. And that reminds me, Mr. Conklin says that you should inspect his office as soon as I get through and see that everything's spick and span. Me? That's right, Miss Brooks. Well, I better get going. But thanks for the keen frog, Mr. Boynton. Oh, you're welcome, Stretch. See you in a little while, Miss Brooks. Oh, that's just dandy. Now I won't be able to accept your charming invitation to lunch, Mr. Boynton. What invitation? Oh, oh, you mean to lunch. Oh. <laughs> Gee, Miss Brooks, maybe you could have a quick lunch with me and then inspect Mr. Conklin's office. I hate to disappoint you, Mr. Boynton, but that's just what I'm going to do. <laughs> clean. Mr. Conklin's office looks neat as a pin. Don't you think so, Miss Brooks? Let's see. Yes, it looks very nice, Stretch. Mr. Conklin should be very pleased when he gets back from lunch. Oh, I hope so. 
No, I'll put my jacket back on and get these animals back to the... Hey, wait a minute. They're gone. Who's gone? Everybody. <laughs> Can't use the frog and the snake. They must have crawled out of my pockets when I put my jacket down. Oh, no. Well, they must be in the office somewhere. We've got to find them before... Well, Mr. let's see how the place looks. Mr. Conklin. Ah, you've done a very nice job, Straight. Well, thanks, Mr. Conklin, You can but... run along now. Miss Brooks, you will stay here and help me find some papers. Yes, sir. Oh, but, Mr. Conklin... I've I... already thanked you, Snodgrass. Now go. <laughs> Now then, Miss Brooks, I've been trying to locate the semi-annual report I made to the Board of Education six months ago. Will you kindly look in the top drawer of my desk while I try the closet here? Very well, Mr. Conklin. Meow. Uh, it's not in there. You hardly looked, Miss Brooks. I saw enough. It's not in here either. Oh, it must be in this drawer. Let me look for myself. You were right, Miss Brooks. There's nothing in there but a cat. Well, maybe it's in this other drawer. No, just another cat. Well, in that case, I'll simply have... Just another cat! (laughs) Miss Brooks, what are those two cats doing in my desk? Maybe they're looking for the report, too. Uh, they, they might have strayed in through an open window, Mr. Conklin. I'll have them removed at once. Well, see that you do. But first, go look in my filing cabinet. Yes, sir. Uh, look under letter B. Yes, sir. <laughs> what are you doing in here? You should be filed under F. <laughs> it's not in here, Mr. Conklin. Well, it must be somewhere. Let me look. Oh, what's in this badge? Oh, let's see. One letter from Boys Town. My beaver patrol badge. One communication from the board. <coughs> one frog. <laughs> An invitation to the Elks barbecue. Another notice of a board meeting. A letter from... One frog! <laughs> <laughs> Miss Brooks, there's a frog hopping around my filing cabinet. Frog? <laughs> yes, he's jumping all over the place. What will I do, Miss Brooks? Why don't you hit him with the snake that's crawling on your coat lapel? <laughs> that's a good idea. I'll just take this snake and then I'll... Take this snake! <laughs> Here, Mr. Conklin, just file him under arrest. Wait. What's going on here? Miss Brooks, look! Look, this mark on my hand. That snake bit me. I'm poised! Oh, but Mr. Conklin, he I've couldn't... got to be inoculated. Quick, take me to the first aid room. <laughs> Just sit in that chair and relax for a minute, Mr. Conklin. I'll be right back. As you say, Miss Brooks. Fire, Miss Brooks. I got all the animals out of Mr. Conklin's office. Good. For a while there, he thought the snake bit him. But I've convinced Mr. Conklin that the mark on his hand is just a bruise. In fact, I was looking for some rubbing alcohol, but they seem to be out of it in first aid. I'll get you some over at the gym. But first, I'd like to cheer Mr. Conklin up a bit. Fire, Mr. Conklin. Let's see your hand. There. All black and blue. That ain't nothing at all, Mr. Conklin. The skin ain't even broke. You got nothing to worry about. Thank you, Doctor. (laughs) Now that... Now that... There they are again. Oh, don't worry about them, Mr. Conklin. I didn't expect you'd be concerned, Miss Brooks. Well, frankly, after hearing nothing but... And all day. It's a relief to hear a. <laughs> oh, I know, a sure cure for hiccups, Mr. Conklin. Now just sit back in that swivel chair for a minute. I am sitting back. Swell. Now the idea is to start spinning you around slowly. Yeah, uh, uh, Stretch, stop that. But it never that. fails. Stretch, you mustn't spin Mr. Conklin like that. I know, we gotta spin him faster. Oh, no, Stretch. Let go of me. Stop this at once, you hear me? Stop it, I say! Stretch! Stop! Uh, there. Daddy, I've been looking all over for you. Who are these girls who just came in? <laughs> it's me, Daddy. Harriet. 
Oh, Mr. Michaels is waiting for you in your office. Oh, oh, thank you, Harriet. Just get up and... Oh, oh, I can hardly stand. I'm so dizzy. Maybe you ought to spin around the other way for a while. <laughs> well, let me help you, Mr. Conklin. I'll deal with you later, boy. Meanwhile, Miss Brooks, you go ahead and tell Mr. Michaels I'll be right there. I'll lean on Harriet and stretch until I feel a little stronger. <laughs> So you see, Mr. Michaels, I certainly wouldn't want my boy in a school run by someone who had to come to my firm for assistance. I'm sure there must be some mistake, Mr. Chalmers. I've known Osgood Conklin for a good many years, and whatever else he may be, he's not a drinking man. Good day, gentlemen. I'm Miss Brooks. Mr. Conklin will be here in a minute. I'm Mr. Michaels, Miss Brooks, and this is Mr. Chalmers. How do you do? How do you do? Uh, tell me, Miss Brooks, uh, how is Mr. Conklin feeling these days? Feeling? Yes. Oh, just fine. He's never been better. Good. You see, Mr. Chalmers, I'm sure that one look at Mr. Conklin will convince you that he's not the type of person who sends postcards to cure that habit incorporated. Hello, Mr. Michael. Sorry I'm late. There you go. Help you up, Mr. Conklin. I uh, must have tripped, Mr. Michaels. And who are these gentlemen with you? These gentlemen are Mr. Chalmers. <laughs> Shake hands with the one in the middle. <laughs> Pleasure to know you, Mr. Chalmers. Don't look now, but that's Mr. Michaels. Mm -hmm. Here's Mr. Chalmers. Oh, of course. <laughs> Glad to shake your hand, Mr. Chalmers. You're shaking his umbrella. <laughs> What seems to be the matter, Mr. Conklin? Having trouble with your vision? Uh, yes, yes, that's it. I broke my glasses this morning. Well, I'll get over here and <coughs> sit down at my desk. Mr. Michaels, look at him stagger. Incredible. Miss Brooks, you said Mr. Conklin never felt better. That's right. You should have seen him an hour ago. <laughs> Boy, what hiccups. <laughs> hiccups? Uh, yes, yes, I always get them when I'm startled. And uh, what, may I ask, startled you? He opened his desk drawer this morning and saw a cat in it. Tell me, Mr. Conklin, in which drawer did you uh, see the cat? Well, the first cat I saw was in this drawer. In this drawer, Mr. Conklin? No, no, there's another cat in there. <laughs> it, was, it was the one in here that startled me. Uh, would you mind showing us your cats, Mr. Conklin? Not at all. They're right here in these drawers. Uh, uh, why, they're gone. Well, they, uh, they come and they go, Mr. Conklin? Mm. Miss, Miss Brooks, where are the cats? They disappeared right after I took you to first aid. <laughs> but he really did see them, gentlemen. Indeed. The next thing you'll be trying to tell us is that he found a bullfrog in his filing cabinet. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> Bullfrog, too? There must be some error here. Yes, he was filed under B instead of F. <laughs> well, Mr. Michaels, do you believe me now? Well, I'm afraid I do, Mr. Chalmers. Compton, I don't want to seem unnecessarily cruel, but if you want to stay on as principal of this... Oh, pardon me, folks. Oh, here's your alcohol, Mr. Conklin. I'll take it straight. <laughs> Miss Brooks... That alcohol is for Mr. Conklin? Yes, it's for where the snake bit him. <laughs> snake? Yes, of course, it, re it really didn't bite him. He just thought it did. Oh. So? So you saw a snake, too, Mr. Conklin? Yes, yes, I did, right on my lapel. Although I'm told that <laughs> he's not poisonous, snakes still give me an extremely unpleasant feeling. I assure you that if I ever see him again, I'll... Wait a minute. There he is under your chair, Mr. Chalmers. Look out. I'll get him, Mr. I'll get him. I'll get him. There. 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 Good for you, Mr. Conklin. You have just killed Mr. Chalmers' umbrella. <laughs> Getting out of here. This man is dangerous. I'll go with you, Mr. Chalmers. As for you, Mr. Conklin, I'll talk to you again when you're sober. Over, Mr. Chalmers here is the head of Cure That Habit Incorporated. Oh, no. This card he received yesterday will explain why he called on me this morning. Good day. Cure This Habit Incorporated? What has that got to do with me? 
Miss Brooks, read this card for me. It says, kindly send me all your literature. I am determined once and for all to rid myself of the curse of alcoholism. And it's signed, Osgood Conklin. Poor soul. <laughs> Any man who has to resort to writing in it. Osgood Conklin! <laughs> I know you didn't write this postcard because I know who did. But it was only a little Friday the 13th joke, and I'm honor-bound not to mention who did it. Oh, you are. <laughs> well, Miss Brooks, such loyalty is worthy of a better fate than the one under which you are about to crumble. <laughs> you see, you and I have traveled the road of learning together for some time now. It hasn't always been a smooth road. But it's been our road, Miss Brooks. Now, do you know what's in store for you? I believe I do, Mr. Conklin. Pass me the rubbing alcohol. The rubbing alcohol? Yes, I might as well have one for the road. <laughs> Arden as our Miss Brooks returns in just a moment, but first... Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl. Tonight? Yes, tonight. Show him how much lovelier your hair can look after a luster cream shampoo. Luster cream, world's finest shampoo. No other shampoo in the world gives K. Dumas magic blend of secret ingredients plus gentle lanolin. Not a soap, not a liquid. Luster Cream Shampoo leaves hair three ways lovelier. Fragrantly clean, free of loose dandruff, glistening with sheen, soft, manageable. Even in hardest water, Luster Cream lathers instantly. No special rinse needed after a Luster Cream Shampoo. So gentle, Luster Cream is wonderful even for children's hair. Tonight? Yes, tonight, try Luster Cream Shampoo. Dream girl, dream girl, beautiful luster cream girl, you owe your crowning glory to a luster cream shampoo. And now, once again, here is our Miss Brooks. Well, much to my surprise, Mr. Conklin didn't dismiss me on the spot, but he did insist that I report to his office immediately after school. On my arrival, he told me we were going down to Mr. Michael's office immediately. But, Mr. Conklin, what good will that do? If you won't tell me who sent that card in, perhaps you'll tell the superintendent of schools. Now, wait, right where you are, Miss Brooks. I'm going to get my hat and coat out of the closet. Yes, Mr. Conklin. Hiya, Miss Brooks. Gee, I'm glad Mr. Conklin's not here. Walter, wait Look a minute. Yes, here's an ad for another one of those liquor cures I'm going to sign his name to. Boy, I wish I could see his face when he finds out about this one. I'll bet he'll be positively purple. <laughs> oh, purple isn't the word for it. Old Marblehead will turn all the colors of the rainbow. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> What should I do now? There's only one thing you can do. Plead insanity. <laughs> Next week, tune in to another Our Miss Brooks show brought to you by Luster Cream Shampoo for soft, glamorous, caressable hair and Colgate Dental Cream to clean your breath while you clean your teeth and help stop tooth decay. Our Miss Brooks, starring Eve Arden, is produced by Larry Burns, directed by Al Lewis, with music by Wilbur Hatch. Mr. Boynton is played by Jeff Chandler, Mr. Conklin by Gail Gordon. Others in tonight's cast were Jane Morgan, Dick Crenna, Gloria McMillan, Bill Lally, Leonard Smith, and Francis X. Bushman. For a beauty bath that brings you glamour from head to toe, get bath size palm olive soap. Yes, ladies. For a velvet smooth beauty lather that caresses your skin, leaves your whole body glowing with the warm blush of fragrant loveliness, enjoy a beauty bath with bath size palm olive. It's perfect for your tub or shower. Just the gentlest massage over your body creates a glorious lather that leaves your skin delightful. Yes, for the most luxurious bath you've ever had. Get big, bath-sized palm olive soap. For mystery liberally sprinkled with laughs, listen to Mr. and Mrs. North Tuesday evening over most of these stations. And be with us again at the same time next week for another comedy episode of Our Miss Brooks. Bob Lamont speaking. 
This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.